All right, guys, it is day two of mowing, and Dre, I just arrived. Dre has already beat me out because the stuff is in the truck. It looks like we are about ready to go, and go figure, the weatherman was wrong. So I thought today was gonna be a rain day. I'm really glad that it is not because I am not trying to cut grass on a Saturday. <laughs> so we're about to get out and try to beat the rain because I do believe it is gonna rain later today, but I do not think it's gonna mess us up too, too much. So I'll take you with me again. Hopefully I can film a little bit more since it's not going to be raining all day like it was yesterday. It was kind of terrible, but uh, it was a good, good break in day. So today should be much smoother as we should remain dry. Dre has to uh, do something at three. So I have to have him back, him back here at three. And that's perfect timing because I'm used to hanging out with my daughter after three every single day. So <laughs> I don't have to miss my father daughter time today. Uh, probably will um, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday through the rest of the week. But uh, thanks for joining us. I hope you liked the first video back. And here we here we go again. All right, stop number one is behind us right here. So I got a question for you: How early is too early to cut your first lawn of the day? We just pulled up. It was like 8:02. We were actually supposed to go to a different lawn, but I'm not familiar with the the route and service autopilot. Uh, was showing me an incorrect first lawn for some reason on the app that is not what was on <laughs> the computer and when i refreshed the app it said uh confirmed that i had done the schedule right and all that but took me to the wrong lawn so kind of pissed at service autopilot right now but i really like cutting uh nicer lawns like this it's a little uh you know looks a little worn out or whatever from the the summer heat but uh nice house nice neighborhood really like cutting in places like this but here we go. Okie dokie, one down. Just put some, uh, you know, 45s or close to that into this lawn. Billy's been like zero turning everything apparently. And uh, I'm much more comfortable cutting a first lawn, uh, lawn for the first time with a, a walk behind, not a zero turn. So I am walk behinding these uh, residential lawns. I mean, this was probably 10, maybe 11,000 square foot total. I think that's perfectly fine for a 48, 52 inch walk behind. Uh, Dre's still trimming, so I need to kind of get um, to helping him blow off real quick so we can get on and beat this rain because it's going to rain again today. But I'm going to flip the camera around and show you a couple things that I'm going to have a talk to uh, with Dre about um, when we get back in the truck because I, I think, you know, he, he needs to learn this stuff. Uh, he's doing a great job, but uh, he, he's still relatively new. I think this is his second season, so I'm um, going to give him a couple pointers on the, the trimming and edging and stuff like that. Okay, so what I wanted to show you is uh, along the street here and everywhere around, um, he is trimming along all the edges. I'm not a fan of that. I think the edges should be edged and not trimmed, like not topped off. Maybe topped off after you mow and then you look at it and you're like, oh, it's a little long on the edge. Take a half inch, inch off or whatever, but he's taking the grass significantly further down. You can see it yellowing out as I be quiet so the homeowner doesn't hear me on the edge down there. And then I didn't get any of this grass in this bed right here. He's trimming, when he's trimming around the edges of all this stuff, um, he's facing the wrong way. Remember the, the grass is always gonna fly one way out of the trimmer. I believe with these steels, it's gonna fly out towards the left. So you would wanna have, you know, the, the grass flying away from the bed when you are uh, trimming if you're gonna do that so it doesn't get in the bed, it goes away from the bed. It looks like he did it correctly here or the grass wasn't just as long or whatever. But another thing I wanted to point out real quick before we get out of here is the rubber mulch. Um, not a fan of rubber mulch at all. Maybe for a playground, but other than that, uh, rubber mulch kind of sucks in my opinion. So there's uh, Billy Stripes with the 60 inch zero turn and there are my stripes with the 48 walk behind so really nice look uh, with that combo right there but time to get to blowing off so we're at stop number two for the day i think we got that one right there and then on this street we got one like halfway down the street and then we got the one on the corner so they're a little too far for me to uh just park the truck once and cut all these lawns so we are going to make three stops real quick but this is great that we'll have 30 seconds of drive time in between three stops. So obviously that is the name of the game. Get your drive time down, your, get your route tight and increase your profitability. So let's go. 
Okay, so I kept Dre's lines right here. Dre normally cuts this one. Uh, he's let me cut everything. It's great. He's 21 though, so I'm the old guy. There are my lines. Those were Dre's lines going diagonal right there. And then what I wanted to show you here, hopefully the blower don't get too loud, but it looks like he's been cutting this back hill the same way over and over and over again. So it's another learning lesson. But if we come down here, the grass looks kind of funny because what I did was kind of put, put the mower in the middle of the lines. So as you can see, it looks a little bit funny on this hill because I straight cut his um the lines that he's been mowing like all season potentially last season too and i cut them in half so my wheels were in the middle of his line and that's why it's all like matted down and almost rutted a little bit where he's been going over it and over it and over it and over it but that's a situation where it's a hill it's kind of hard to uh do anything about it but we're about to go up the street to the next lawn and keep it moving all right real quick I just busted a zero turn out because I wanted to knock the cobwebs off, but there were none. But uh, this lawn, I don't know if you can tell, it has more weeds than grass. So I figured that'd be a good lawn to actually just, you know, <laughs> if I forgot how to do something on a zero turn, turn, not tear up the grass or anything like that, I thought it'd be a good time to do it. Um, but does anybody get any joy out of cutting a lawn like this? Like there's no landscaping around the back. There's some junk plants on the side and around the front. I mean, I, I get no pleasure in cutting this. I uh, can't believe you can see the stripes that well, honestly. But let me know in the comments. Hmm. Grass on the face. Okay, so we're to the next lawn. And I noticed that sign, if you can't tell, that's the lawn we're cutting, it says pending. So uh, Dre already told me that the people moving in uh, have contacted them and they'll be cutting the grass. So. My suggestion was if you didn't know who was moving into this house, send them a letter immediately as uh, you know, the, your customer moves out, send them a letter and say, you know, new resident or whatever you got to say on the letter. And then just say, hey, we cut the grass. We'd love to continue cutting the grass and try to keep this customer. You know what I mean? All right. We got to get to cutting. Okay. We just got done. We got to get on to the next one. I just want to show you. We got lines that way. We got lines that way. And then... We come. You guys sure are noisy. Uh, <laughs> we, we do our best to be quiet. <laughs> okay, started sprinkling on us again a little bit today. It was supposed to hold off for us, but uh, so my question is, is I was kind of like, should we skip this? But I did send out an email asking everybody on the route this week if they wanted to be skipped, and this guy. Did not say he wanted to be skipped. So we're gonna go ahead and cut it. So here we go. Okay, I got the safety glasses on after I uh, got some in my eye. Should have taken a picture of it, it was pretty crazy. But of course this fence is in the way. But what I'm trying to show you is my stripes going this way because the majority of people coming in here are driving up this street or obviously back down the street. But to get to here, as far as I know, you have to come up this street. So instead of having the lines going the way they did, which were like this, I did it the way everyone can see them coming in. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you is this lawn was just aerated. So I don't know if you can see that, but If you're new and you see all those plugs in the lawn, the lawn just got aerated. Um, so I have no idea how long ago it was, but hopefully the seed had been down a little bit with the rain the past couple days. Uh, I don't think we were blowing the grass seed around or anything like that. Uh, love seeing people that care about their lawn getting it aerated and overseeded because it's certainly not a super cheap service, but good looking lawn right there. Like cutting these. Okay, <laughs> we got a twofer. We got this one and the next door neighbor. And what's really cool about these two lawns is they were literally my customers way back in the day. So <laughs> between me and Billy, we've been cutting these lawns for like 15 years. <laughs> it's pretty crazy when you think about it. I think, uh, I know like the, one of the next stops is uh, been a long time customer, probably just as much as Mike here. Uh, this one picked up a couple years after this one. Uh, we're still trying to beat this rain, so gotta go. Okay. 
So I was kind of excited when we got here because we're cutting that house with the star on it. it looked uh, kind of cool compared to all the other houses in the neighborhood, cool yard, that kind of stuff. And then I get around the backyard and uh, there's like hardly any grass. I don't know why that won't come off my face. Uh, there's hardly any grass in the back because of all the tree cover. And before I know it, I'm like, what? What just happened to my leg? And uh, it was a bee sting. Uh, before I ended up running like halfway down the street, uh, basically to that red car up there, that's where I went. Uh, still had one bee chase me. I'm pretty sure I got some at least five, if not ten times. So <laughs> I don't really know what the protocol is. That's actually never happened to me before. But uh, my legs are stinging really, really bad right now. <laughs> so we're about to go to lunch and uh, see how I feel after that. But right now my legs are on fire. So as you are cutting, watch out for random uh, packs of bees. I don't know what they're called, but uh, they're, they're, they ain't playing. They're a real deal. So watch out. Okay, we're back from lunch. About to cut this guy. Pretty sure I was stung at least five times. So apparently I'm not. <laughs> apparently I'm not allergic. I had no idea. But uh, I don't feel great. My legs are definitely sore. And uh, my food tasted kind of funny. I don't know. I did stop and get some Benadryl because apparently that's what you're supposed to do. But back to cutting grass. Okay, so as we wrap up day two, I'm just blowing some grass off, starting on the street, blowing it towards the sidewalk. Um, from the sidewalk into the yard, up the driveway, I blow off the back deck, I blow off the front porch, I blow off everything, even if there weren't grass clippings on there, blowing off things like leaves and just dust and whatever else um, as a quick, easy, you know, extra little thing you can do for your client. Um, so to recap the video, the question of the video was how early is too early to mow? Um, we started a little after 8 a.m. In this video, I do not believe that's too early at all. I would say right around the 7.30 mark. Um, if you're in a residential neighborhood with the homes close together, stuff like that, um, you know, depending on what you're mowing, a commercial property, I think, you know, when it's light out, you could start mowing that. But it just kind of depends on where, where you are, what you're cutting, stuff like that, and if you know your customer and, and their routines and all that. Um, we talked about line direction in the video. Um, the way I like to go about how to put the lines in the grass is obviously kind of the contour of the driveway and, and things like that. But over and beyond that, like think about the direction that most people will see those lines. And then also think about your customer looking at the lines from inside their house. So those are kind of the, the three things that I use to determine how I'm going to stripe up a lawn, uh, contour of the sidewalk, driveway, stuff like that. Um, then the direction of cars driving on the street, how would they see the stripes? And then the customer inside the house looking out at their lawn. Um, you know, so if you can get the lines looking good in those different uh, viewpoints, then you know, you're gonna impress some people, uh, more people with your mowing. Uh, let's see, what else did we do? Um, so another little thing, just trim to the right, edge to the left. So that just comes down to you know, the, the direction you're going when you're doing these things, it's, it all has to do with the way the trimmer head is spinning. It's just easier to trim to the right going with that, that motion uh, rotation and then edge to the left because you flip the trimmer over so you'll be going the opposite direction and you want to trim the grass to the cut height. You don't want to trim the grass lower. Uh, another thing that I noticed in this <laughs> during this day out mowing was that they appear to be like using <laughs> the same lines over and over and over again and it most often happened on hills and i get it you know it's gonna suck to go straight up and down a hill or sometimes you can't really go a certain direction on a hill because it's gonna scalp or this or that or the other thing but you can do something as simple as just taking the wheels on your mower and putting them in the middle of your stripe so you, your wheels are not constantly hitting the same uh, part of the lawn because I mean some of these lawns I think you know they're almost matted down to the point where the lawn mowers are literally killing the grass and that is not good I mean when I would go the opposite direction I would notice you know the bumps on the tire tracks but you could see the matted down grass you could see grass dying it was not um, a good thing to see so hopefully that will address that and uh, that'll be a thing of the past uh, last thing I wanted to mention as we're looking at the equipment, the little setup we got here, 
if you have a customer that is moving and you see the pending sign, I would definitely like proactively try to keep that account, assuming you want to keep that account, talk to the homeowner, your current homeowner, and let them know you would love to continue mowing for the people that are moving in. Maybe they can tell, pass that information along at closing or something like that. Um, or send them a letter like I suggested in the video. But you already know, until the next video, keep making money.